it is quite clear that war is a profoundly human escapade, governed more strongly by emotion than by science. We should now be a bit more careful when using the principles of war. They are useful intellectual and analytical tools when looking at military operations, but they are neither carved in stone nor universal. They are an attempt to codify military art and science, and if they are given too much weight or become a template for military plans, they become less and less useful. Perhaps the best we can conclude is that there may well be universal principles of war. We just do not know what they are yet. The last thing that we quickly considered was military culture. This fascinating subject may appear self-evident, but it is not. Too often, especially when we work closely with allies, we forget that the differences among us will extend well beyond any language barriers. Even allies as closely integrated as Canada, the United States, and Great Britain have many deep-rooted cultural differences that extend far beyond the slight differences in English that we speak. Our command cultures are not the same. The relationships among officers and NCOs are unique to each of the three countries, and so are many tactical concepts. There is no need to go any further, for all we wanted to do when touching on this subject was to ensure that we did not overlook it. Culture matters, and occasionally they clash. This is just as true for military cultures as for national ones. We are now well-armed and ready to proceed. We have reviewed critical ideas, both great and small, that will have an impact on our tactics. We have dipped our collective toe into the maelstrom of military theory and are ready to begin looking at concrete issues that will affect junior leaders in a conventional battle space. To borrow the motto of a unit I came to know well and fondly, 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment, U.S. Army, Allons!